November 402. Did you want to pick up an IFR uh, to Henderson if I could do that? Uh, yeah, I would take that, Lamp 402. December 19th, 2015. The busy holiday travel season is in full swing. A 42-year-old, non-instrument rated private pilot pre-flights a Piper Turbo Lance, November 36402, for an afternoon flight from Reed Hill View Airport in San Jose, California, to Henderson Executive in Henderson, Nevada. The 269-hour pilot is familiar with the route, which he's flown five times in the previous two years. But this is the first time he'll fly it in the Lance, in which he has logged more than 56 hours over the past six months. The airplane is IFR certified, but not for flight into known icing, and it has an autopilot that the pilot never received training on and presumably does not know how to use. The six-seat airplane has plenty of room for his wife and three young kids, ages 9 to 14, though the oxygen system only has three cannulas. The pilot checked the weather the night before and received a briefing online before today's flight. VFR conditions are forecast for the departure and arrival airports, but the en route forecast is another story. Airmets for IFR conditions, mountain obscuration, and moderate icing from the freezing level up to 18,000 feet are issued for the route. Unfavorable conditions for anyone, especially a VFR-only pilot with just under four hours of instrument training. Also, the area forecast for the San Joaquin Valley, which the pilot plans to cross, calls for a ceiling beginning between 2,000 and 4,000 feet, with cloud tops at 15,000 to 18,000, from the northern valley to the southern Sierra Nevada. Over a large area, visibility is expected to be 3 to 5 miles with mist, and in the southern section of the mountains, light to moderate snow showers. The pilot does not make a call to flight service and files his VFR flight plan electronically. He's planned on departing San Jose at 2 p.m. local time, then heading southeast to avoid the towering Sierra Nevada, with waypoints at Paso Robles Municipal Airport and Meadowsfield Airport in Bakersfield, before flying on to Henderson Executive at a VFR cruising altitude of 13,500 feet. The estimated time en route is 2 hours and 4 minutes. The family of five will be visiting their old hometown of Henderson, Nevada, where they are expected at a friend's surprise party this evening, a perfect start to their vacation. Undeterred by the forecast conditions en route, and with four and a half hours of fuel on board for a two-hour flight, enough to circumnavigate the weather, the pilot decides to fly anyway. It's 2.35 p.m. when the Lance departs. The beginning of the flight goes smoothly. The pilot contacts NorCal Approach for VFR flight following. During the initial climb, he abandons his original planned altitude of 13,500 feet and requests an altitude of 15,500 feet to stay above the clouds as storms build over central California. Soon after, Lance 402 encounters the forecast weather conditions. At 3.12 p.m., just over half an hour into the flight, the pilot begins an unannounced climb out of 15,500 feet. ATC asks him about the altitude change. The pilot, flying south, responds that he is climbing and will level off at 16,500. But it's not enough altitude. Trying to avoid the clouds, he climbs even higher. And at 3.16, the pilot follows up with a request for 17,500. One of the passengers takes photos of the clouds that now appear to be at their altitude. Oxygen use is now likely a pressing concern. All along, air traffic control has alerted pilots on frequency to bands of precipitation and the potential for airframe icing in the area. Once again, ATC warns pilots of moderate precipitation nearby. In the Lance pilot's case, the weather is directly ahead and on his intended route of flight. The pilot of a Cessna 414 near the Shafter VOR reports to LA Center that the tops are around 18,000 feet. 
the Lance pilot, now past Paso Robles, and flying toward Bakersfield, asks ATC to confirm what he heard. LA Center, Lance 36402, uh, what was the position of that uh, uh, Mazda aircraft, 55? And November 402, that traffic is about uh, one mile east of the Shafter VOR, flight level 180. And uh, from your position, uh, about 11 o'clock and uh, 30 miles. Roger, uh, LA Center, just wondering whether or not I can get over to their altitude and clear the clouds. And November 36402, I am depicting areas of moderate to heavy precipitation um, from, yeah. 9 o'clock all the way to about 1 o'clock along your route of flight uh, extends for about uh, one zero miles. The pilot asks if the controller happens to know what the bottoms are. November 402, I don't have any reports on the bottoms. Uh, I do have reports of some uh, light rime icing all the way up as high as flight level 190 uh, in southeast of your area. All right, we're going to deviate to the south to try to go around these and uh, perhaps uh, go through Marsdale, last 402. November 402, Roger. Another pilot contacts Center to say that the tops in the Palmdale area are at about 21,000 feet. Center then alerts the Lance pilot. That weather is in the direction he is heading. In November 402, uh, uh, some reports the tops reported around flight level 210 um, northwest of the Palmdale area, which is uh, 11 o'clock from you and about uh, uh, four or three miles the direction that you want to head towards. Uh, LA Center, Lance 402, copy. Uh, we'll just keep chasing the clouds uh, towards Palmdale. November 402, Roger. The weather continues to deteriorate, and ATC updates the Lance pilot on the conditions. November 402, uh, depicting areas of moderate precipitation, uh, 11 to about uh, 2 o'clock, uh, extends for about 10 miles along your route of flight, uh, just to some small areas. Uh, Roger. At about 3.50, L.A. Center offers the pilot an IFR clearance to Henderson. The non-instrument rated private pilot accepts. November 402, did you want to pick up an IFR uh, to Henderson, if I can do that? Uh, yeah, I would take that, Lance 402. November 402, what uh, altitude are you requesting? Uh, 15,000 is fine, Lance 402. And November 402, are you ready for your IFR? Lance 402, you're ready to copy. November 402, now clear to the Henderson Airport via Direct Hector, Hotel Echo Charlie, Direct, uh, correction, Hotel Echo Charlie, Victor 21 to Boulder, Bravo Lima Delta Direct, maintain 15,000. The pilot attempts to absorb and execute the IFR clearance. With a mounting workload and no instrument rating, this undoubtedly takes a great deal of mental effort. Roger, Hector, Hotel Echo Charlie via Bravo Lima Delta, uh, 15,000, Lance 402. The IFR clearance is meant to take the pilot east toward Henderson, but the airplane begins to turn north toward heavier precipitation and IMC conditions. As the pilot attempts to work his clearance, he has to focus attention away from his gauges and unknowingly enters a scenario ripe for spatial disorientation, changing aircraft attitude while looking away from the flight instruments. November 402, are you turning northbound? Uh, Roger, I just took a heading off of Bakersfield. I'm going to change it to the current uh, assigned uh, IFR. November 402, fly heading of 095. Fly 095, Lance 402. November 402, make an immediate right turn heading 095. At this point, Lance 402's flight path has become erratic. The airplane climbs and descends, and then spirals down. Air traffic control at 402, made it, made it, made it. In the clouds, very likely disoriented, with insufficient training on how to handle the conditions, the situation rapidly turns tragic. November 04, Delta, say again. Oh, it's 402 saying, made it, made it, made it. November 402, LA Center. 402, made it, made it, made it. Two, LA Center, uh, Bakersfield Airport is uh, 11 o'clock and uh, 10 miles northwestbound. November 36402, LA Center. At 3.56 p.m., a final radar target shows Lance 402 at 11,200 feet. ATC still tries to contact the pilot, but there is no response. November 04, Delta, are you able to see any traffic off your left-hand side? Uh, about uh, one zero miles? Negative, he's now would be in the clouds. Uh, I saw his transponder go off. Uh, 
so that scared me a little bit. Number 36402, uh, Baker Field Approach. Contact, contact, contact Baker Field Approach on 1180. And number 36402, contact Baker Field Approach 118.8. November 36402, if you hear LA Center ident. The weather isn't good enough for Bakersfield's air support unit to begin a search and rescue operation, and a ground search effort begins instead. In the next hour, three special METARs are released as weather drops to one and a half mile visibility and a 200 foot ceiling with mist. At 7.42 p.m., the Kern County Sheriff's Department finds November 36402's high angle of impact crash site in an almond orchard almost directly below the last radar target. All five aboard have perished. The NTSB found the probable cause of the accident to be the pilot's decision to conduct and continue the flight, despite forecast and en route conditions not conducive to safe visual flight. The pilot's decision to accept an IFR clearance, despite not being instrument rated, and finally, flying into IMC during cruise flight. The resulting spatial disorientation and loss of control led to the in-flight breakup of the airplane in the crash. While icing could not be rolled out, any icing would have been a direct result of the pilot's decision to fly VFR into IMC. The NTSB also found that the pilot's self-induced pressure to arrive at the surprise party factored into his decision-making. How can we learn from the risks this pilot took to make us all safer pilots in the future? While we cannot know exactly what the pilot was thinking, the external pressure of arriving for the party that night cannot be overlooked. It's likely that his focus on arriving as scheduled impaired his ability to assess the bigger picture and make a more objective decision. Research has shown that when we have an especially high level of self-interest, it's difficult to make a sound judgment. We must all be on guard any time we know there are external pressures encouraging us to get to our destination. With weather such a factor, this perhaps would have been a good time for the pilot to go beyond a standard textual weather briefing. Flying single pilot, the additional human resource of a weather briefer could have been a helpful aid to the decision-making process and possibly a guard against self-imposed pressures to make the trip. If the pilot had discussed with a briefer his route and planned altitude of 13,500 feet, it is likely that VFR flight would not have been recommended due to forecast weather en route. After departure, the pilot encountered difficulty and had to change his plan almost immediately, a red flag for the weather to come. Once en route, as the weather continued to deteriorate, the pilot could have asked for vectors to a diversion airport or clear airspace and alerted ATC that he was not instrument rated. The NTSB noted that the insufficient oxygen system was likely a factor in the pilot's decision not to climb higher. But given the greater danger of flying into IMC, the pilot could have asked for a temporary emergency climb above the weather and into Class A airspace. The NTSB determined that had he climbed, it is probable that he would have been able to remain in visual conditions and maintain control of the airplane. Declaring an emergency to LA Center or using his authority as pilot in command to intentionally deviate from his cleared VFR altitude and into Class A airspace could have resulted in a positive outcome. Accepting and then attempting to comprehend an IFR clearance with very little training on the complexity involved is a demanding task. Flying intentionally into IMC without an instrument rating compounds the risk. These troubling decisions indicate the pilot underestimated the complexities of instrument flight and how rapidly things deteriorate with spatial disorientation and loss of situational awareness. Research has shown that once we make decisions, we tend to overemphasize any data that supports the decision and underemphasize data that indicates we should reconsider. It appears the pilot fell into that trap of confirmation bias. In the face of visible evidence that the weather was worse than what he used to make his go-no-go -no -go decision, he pressed on. We must be honest about the weather and not be willing to bet our safety on a hope for things to get better. Investing in a data link weather receiver to improve situational awareness during flight 
can provide invaluable information for decision making. It's important to know the capabilities of your airplane and the systems on board. In this case, use of the autopilot would very likely have kept the pilot from losing control in the clouds. The flight path and data suggest that the pilot was hand-flying the airplane, and the NTSB's findings suggest that he did not know how to use the autopilot. It's easy to sit here at zero knots in 1G, devoid of pressure and circumstance, and critique the decisions the accident pilot made. What's important for us to realize, though, is that we all have external pressures that can push us to make bad decisions. The trick is knowing these external pressures exist and developing measures to deal with them. We must be ready to accept new information and be willing to reassess our initial decision when the circumstances change. As pilots in command, our passengers are relying on us to make clear-headed, objective decisions based on our training, proficiency, equipment, and the conditions of the flight. If planning on flying GA to an important event, take measures to reduce the time pressure. Consider going a day early. Make sure people on the other end understand that general aviation is subject to changes of plan based on uncontrollable factors like weather. Knowing that they will understand if we must make alternate plans will make a no-go decision much easier.